Welcome. Uh, today I'm hanging out with Max and we're going to show you how to create an NFT project using Zora's NFT creator tools and forward the revenues into a juice box project of your choice. How's it going, Max? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Maybe you want to tell the people a little bit about your background and what you do for work these days. Yeah, sure. Um, I am about three weeks in as a community developer advocate for Zora. Uh, taught myself how to code over the last six months and just joined the team. So building out documentation, example projects, pretty much just helping people um, integrate uh, with the various pieces of Zora functionality. And uh, for the, the audience, Max is a developer DAO alum. So uh, you can check out his blog on his uh, Twitter. Let me pull that up um, and uh, learn about how he taught himself how to write Solidity. Um, so yeah, super cool. Okay. So let's jump it right into it. Uh, so the, we're going to follow this little guide that I wrote up, which will probably be updated and have a different URL by the time this video is posted, but basically how to create an NFT with Zora and point the revenues at Juicebox. So let's jump in, jump over to juicebox.money and go to the projects tab and pick the project that we want to forward our NFT mint revenues to. So I'm going to use the Juicebox project, but you could use any project or you could even create a new one and you'll follow the same instructions. So we go to the project. Uh, first thing you gotta do is connect your wallet. All right, mine's already connected, so I didn't have to click the little pop-up. Um, and then we go over to this tools menu on the right side. Same for every project. And we're interested in this piece up here, the create payable address. So what this is gonna do is help us to deploy a contract. And when any ETH goes into that contract, uh, that will, ETH will be forwarded directly to the Juicebox project that we've chosen uh, in this step. So uh, let's walk through that. So we're going to deploy payment address. If an address has already been deployed for the project, you'll see a list of them here in a soon to be released update to the front end. By the time you're watching this, that'll probably be live. So we click that uh, deploy payment button uh, and here it says create an Ethereum address that can be used to pay your project directly. Um, and we'll open up the advanced settings and I'm going to add uh, a URL to a uh, pinata hosted image, this image, which is going to be our NFT image. This is a DALI created AI, uh, spin on the Banny mascot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pop this address in here. You could use an IPFS address for now. The juice box front end is rendering them better if they're these, uh, JBX pinata addresses. But by the time you watch the video, a regular IPFS address will be fine here. So IPFS colon slash slash whatever the uh, CID is for your image. Uh, and then we'll, we can leave token minting enabled, but uh, because of a little wrinkle we'll see in a minute with the Zora contracts, we're gonna have to set a custom token beneficiary. So this is gonna be the person that receives the tokens corresponding to the contribution to the Juicebox project. So in the case of Juicebox DAO, when anyone makes a contribution, or in this case, mints an NFT, the uh, NFT revenues into the Juicebox project create JBX tokens, and this is who receives those JBX tokens. And there's a little bit of an explainer of that here. So I'm going to choose my own address uh, up here. And you uh, would recommend anyone to put their own address into this? Like, yeah, you could, right choose, you could choose your own address. Another good choice might be uh, if you have like a multi-sig, if the project belongs to a multi-sig, uh, you could put that address uh, in. Um, so we can go check here, like dow.jbx.eth would be the multi-sig that controls the Juicebox project. So you could use that instead. Uh, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to use my own wallet address for the one we're using today. Uh, but yeah, for reference, you could do whatever you want. Um, and then I'm just going to move you out of the way <laughs> so I can hit, hit the button. Okay. Bring me back into place and we're moving speedy today. So I'm going to set it to high and hit confirm. So this is going to deploy a payment address contract and this should take a few seconds. Ah, okay. It's good. So with that succeeded, uh, this message will pop up and it gives us the address uh, that we can pay. We could pay in any way. We could even just send ETH straight to it and it'll land in the juice box project, but we're gonna use this in a second. So we're gonna copy this. If you've been waiting so long for your transaction to process that you left the page, whatever, you can also find this information here. Let's see if it shows. Uh, and it'll be, I think it hasn't updated yet with the latest one, but in any case, this is the same thing. So it'll say created ETH ERC20 payment address, and it'll give you the address right here. And I think it's probably just like latency on the graph or whatever for this to update with the one we just actually created. So we already copied that. So now we can jump over to the Zora create page. Uh, so this is create.zora.co and hit create a collection. And we're gonna do an addition. And it's already got some information I filled in uh, previously. So we're gonna call this AI Banny. Okay, so we got our image, this uh, Dali Banny. 
uh, called AI Banny, Simple Banny. This is an AI Banny, very powerful. Minting this NFT funds the Juicebox DAO treasury on Juicebox protocol. Cool. And we're going to set the price to 0. 0.005 ETH. It's going to be an open edition of unlimited size, and it's going to be available from now, uh, what is it, 12.51 on August 1st, 2022, until the same, uh, you know, about 23 hours from now. Uh, we're not going to take a royalty, and in this payout address, we're going to paste in that address that we copied previously from the Juicebox page. Let's see if it updated yet with that. Yeah, here we go. So this address here. So we can uh, also worth noting uh, that 5% of the primary sales go to Zora.eth and that could change in the future, but at least at the time of recording, that's how it works. So we're gonna hit the create button and hope that we set everything up correctly. I'm gonna crank the speed on this and hit okay. And let's see how long it takes for that to process. So I guess while we're waiting for this, we might as well explore some other stuff. So a uh, couple things worth knowing. There is testnet.create.zora.co where you can play around with the Zora interface on Rinkaby. There's also rinkaby.juicebox.money. So you could do this whole process on Rinkaby on both sides of the equation. Uh, and I guess we'll both be figuring you, out you what have, to do have, now that, when Rinkaby's dead. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, pretty soon. Do you have that same, is there that same form functionality for Juicebox yeah. on the Rinkaby? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Let me see. Uh, oh, maybe not on this current version, but in any case, it should be there. Uh, oh, no, you know what? This is because this, this project is from the V1, and we're, we're dealing with V2 projects. So if we go to a V2 yeah. project, yeah, you can see it there. Oh, yeah. Payment address. Oh, so so we, yeah, they can go end to end this whole process. Check it out first. Exactly. So testnet.create.zora and rinkaby.juicebox. Um, and then a couple other resources. So you created this Zora starter kit. Uh, you want to tell people what, what this is about? Yeah, I'll, I'll be doing a deep dive in this on the upcoming hackathon, um, August 4th, August 10th. But pretty much it's just like a place to start with building out integrations with uh, all of the Zora functionality. So there's like the API page, which is like example implementation of how to use the ZDK to do, you know, using the, the indexer in like a pretty easy way. You don't need to know like GraphQL or anything. There's the create page, which is you can actually deploy your own contracts um, from that as well. So, you know, with more sort of more granular functionality and then then, then currently on create.zora.co, you can see just like way too many imp inputs there. Um, and then protocol is pretty cool. It uh, has example implementations for all of the write calls for the ask module, which is like buy now, offers module, which is like making bids unsolicited on NFTs, and then the auction, um, one of the auction modules that uh, allows you to do like reserve auctions on chain. Cool. So it's kind of like a visual interface for interacting with everything that Zora does. Yeah, exactly. Uh, more and more and of it over time. Yep. And then there's a repo. You, anyone can just fork this. You can take anything out and put it in your project. So yeah. Cool. So it's like a can serve like a starter kit. Exactly like it's called. Um, so this is Zora-starter-kit.forsell.app. Maybe that'll get an even better URL over time. Uh, yeah, we'll put yeah. links to all this stuff in the, in the YouTube video. Okay. So the NFT is dropped. Uh, so we got our banana token, open edition. Uh, maybe do you want to try minting one of these? Yeah. I want to send me that link in this chat. Here we go. AI Banny. Oops, maybe this AI Banny will show up on mint.fun probably right away too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be right. just be able to throw that address in there, right? Oh, they've searched too. That's awesome. Yeah, they do. I don't know. It maybe takes a minute to index. Got some prior birthday Banny ones. Uh, it would be the contract address I'd have to throw in here, right? Uh, yeah, should be. Let's see. All right, it looks like my mint just went through as well. Cool. Okay, they don't have this index yet, so we'll see if by the end of the video they've figured it out. All right, can you do just slash, I guess? Slash the. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, nice. Hey, there we go. Cool. Minted by me. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so now we can jump back to Zora. Where did I put it? Here. Uh, we could probably see that uh, one of them has been minted. Okay, so there's a bit of money in the NFT contract that we just dropped, this AI Banny NFT edition. So as the creator of this, I can hit this withdraw button. And I assume it does it have to be the owner or can anyone maybe hit that withdraw button? I don't know. It's anyone who's the admin of the function, I believe, um, can call this one. So yeah, you would just need to make, you, which you can make other people admins as well. Using, there's like an admin um, little sort of service tool there. Um, so yeah. 
Got it. So I just hit this withdraw, uh, but obviously you could wait until there was enough to make it worth the gas to do so. And that's going to call a function on this NFT contract that will then forward the funds to that address that we set up previously. So the one that we see here is the us setting up that address in the first place. And when this transaction processes, we'll be able to see, and I can go and even be more aggressive with the gas here. Oh, there we go. Already completed. So now the treasury is empty and those funds will have been forwarded here. And I think now we're just waiting for the graph indexing to catch up. Uh, oh, that's awesome. So, so there's like a da like a juice box dashboard where you can see like what the balance is, I guess. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. So if you go to the juice box project page over here, you can see uh, the volume that has been raised into the project so far. So maybe we'll remember this 8.4546. I wonder if that's already updated or not. Um, and then you can see the amount that's in the treasury currently. Um, and then the amount that's in the wallet that controls the treasury. So there's a thousand ETH in the wallet that controls this treasury and there's 200K uh, USD or 121 uh, ETH. And this is only a juice box V2. We're currently transitioning from the V1 to the V2 for holding the main juice box DAO treasury. So there's actually a lot more back in the V1 treasury and eventually that'll all be in here. So if we refresh, maybe we're lucky. Hey, there we go. So this is us pulling in, hitting that withdraw button on the Zora uh, contract. And this is the ETH hitting here. So if you waited and sold a bunch of NFTs, then this number could be much more exciting. <laughs> and you can see that that little image that we set up front in the advanced tab on the juice box page uh, shows up here every time uh, anybody calls withdraw on the NFT contract. So that's how you create an NFT on Zora's creator contracts and forward the revenues directly into a juice box project. So pretty cool. Max, thanks so much for hanging out and doing this with me. Yeah, of course. Super cool to see this integration. Uh, love that we were able to figure this out. Yeah, super awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so check out the show notes for uh, links to instructions, etc. And thanks for watching.